Namaste children. Welcome back to Social Science class. Children, we were learning about the Sultans of Delhi. Under Sultans of Delhi, we learnt the slave dynasty. Now let us learn about the Kilji dynasty children. You can see here the Kilji dynasty in the pink part. Whatever you can see the pink part is Kilji dynasty. Okay. So here after the slave dynasty the Kilji dynasty came to power. Alauddin Kilji was the strongest of all the sultans of Delhi. His rule was based on military power. Alauddin Kilji he introduced several reforms in administrative, military as well as economic fields. And also he regulated the price of goods commonly consumed. So you all know about commonly consumed goods which is often regularly we consume. No, on such goods he regulated the price and he also banned consumption of liquor and gambling in Delhi. You know about liquor, isn't it children? Alcoholic drinks and gambling. Juju what we call that is gambling. He uh, banned. And those who were doing all such things, that is the guilty, were severely punished. In spite of banning this consumption of liquor and gambling, if anybody was doing that, they were severely punished. And Alauddin aspired to conquer entire India. You can see here, this was his kingdom. Okay, he wanted to conquer the entire India. In the first instance, he conquered North India by his military strength. You can see all the pink part. It is Kilji dynasty. He conquered North India by his military strength. To South India, he sent Malikafur. He sent Malikafur. A slave who was close to him. With a huge army, he sent Malikafur to South India. Malikafur invaded four major kingdoms of South India and looted their capitals. Which were those four kingdoms conquered by Malikafur? They were the Yadavas of Maharashtra. The capital was Devagiri. And the Kakatiyas of Andhra, Varangal was the capital. The Hoysalas of Karnataka, Dwarasamudra. And Pandyas of Tamil Nadu, Madurai was the capital of Pandyas. All these four kingdoms Malikafur conquered. And Malikafur, continuing his military march, proceeded up to Rameshwaram. All along the route, his army destroyed several places of worship and also looted wealth. Never before had such a huge quantity of wealth of South India flowed to Delhi. Because they were their capital was in Delhi. So, a huge quantity of wealth from South India was carried to Delhi. And Alauddin also he patronized Amir Khusru and Amir Hassan and some other Persian poets. And he built a new fort in Delhi known as Siri. And this is what you can see here is Alai Darwaza which is in Delhi. It's a grand structure was a contribution to the architecture, Kilji's contribution to the architecture. Alauddin's last days were very tragic. There were several revolts in the palace to overthrow him. Finally, Malikafur, out of greed for power, killed his master. See, Malikafur, he himself Alauddin Kilji, he sent Malikafur 
to south india and made so conquer so many kingdoms finally malika for out of greed for power he wanted to become the king so he killed his master and he declared himself as a sutta but later on he too was killed by his enemies within a short time the kilji ruled ended and the tuglaks came to power the kutuglaks came to power you can see here children tuglak dynasty the entire pink part is tuglak dynasty mohammed bin tuglak was the most notable sultan of tuglak dynasty mohammed bin tuglak he was imprudent and ill tempered who took hasty decisions he never used to think just suddenly he used to take decisions whether it is right or wrong he was not he never used to think about it he could be easily enraged if we want to tell the about him in a word we can describe him as a strange character and what was what were his administrative experiments let us know children see i told you isn't it you can see here delhi here and delhi in the north daulatabad in the south okay e to improve the functioning of the administration he undertook several measures one such experiment he was transfer from delhi to devagiri transfer from delhi to devagiri he wanted to transfer his capital from delhi to devagiri so what he did he thought that the capital should be centrally located because daulatabad as you can see it can, it is centrally located so he was in the view that it should be centrally located devagiri was 700 miles from delhi 700 miles from delhi and he renamed daulatabad he passed strict orders that all the residents of delhi should move to the new place See, all the residents of delhi should move to the new capital the residents of delhi who were forced to leave their homes faced untold misery in the course of their journey to a far off place in the south see now we can easily move from one place to another children as you all know we have got all types of means of transport we have got but when we speak about the tuglak dynasty at that time there were no such uh, no such transportation at all only with bullock carts or the carts horse carts like that only such things can be done or they must walk from there to here so when he when they were forced to leave a large number of people died on their way while coming only a large number of people died anyway after shifting the capital after shifting the capital he realized that he had committed a grave mistake see he had already shifted then he realized that it ha- he has done a big mistake so what he did he did not keep quiet again he ordered reshifting of the capital and also the people to delhi again from daulatabad to delhi however only a few survived to return to delhi because many of them they died on the way 
they could not written and one one more thing what he did was the issue of the tokens children you can see here this is the silver coins a face value of the silver coins usually silver is costly than the copper but what he did he issued copper coins in the place of silver coins with the same face value but he failed to pass order that only government had the authority to mint copper coins consequently people themselves began to mint copper tokens so they themselves they started to mint the copper coins then this resulted in the devaluation of the coins finally he abolished the use of copper coins and he exchanged the silver coins for copper coins the treasury became empty and he was deceived by the people this experiment proved a great failure and weakened the financial condition of the state the government could not meet the demand for silver coins in exchange for token coins then while he was putting down a revolt in sindh province he died of fever after the tughlaq rule the sayed and the lodi dynasties ruled from delhi for a short period the last lodi ruler ibrahim was defeated in the battle of panipat by babur who laid the foundation for the mughal rule which we will be learning in our next lesson so here children let me tell you about the contributions of delhi sultans although the hindus formed the majority under the sultanate the administration functioned on islamic relics islamic lines because they were islams the army forced the army formed the backbone of the state and the sultans were supreme authorities balban he is balban a notable sultan he declared that he was god's representative and hence accountable to god alone not for anybody else the sultans however had to face frequent revolts of the local rulers and were always fearful of losing power economy the burden of the land tax heavily fell on the peasants as you know mohammed bin tughlaq further increased the land revenue and got it collected mercilessly because his uh, treasury was empty so people peasants revolted everywhere and we weaving was the major occupation of the people the cities provided employment to a large number of workers and account of brisk building activities taking place there and the sultans were mainly importing horses and all architecture and literature the main structures built by sultans were the famous kutub minar 17 meter tall and alai darwaza it was an uh, this is a siri fort alai darwaza already i have showed you and kuwait ul islam mosque all these are in delhi during the sultanate period the urdu language evolved and amir khusru and amir hasan they were great persian poets of this period amir khusru was a musician and evolved musical instruments such as tabla sitar and others the poet jayasi wrote padmavat in urdu which was a sufi poem ramananda kabir das rai das mirabai all these people from bhakti cult they belong to this period okay children so you write down the chronology and the notes which is given completed in your class work children thank you